Cut it off. Not, not one upsmanship, you know. Yeah. Like you, you say, yeah, you did oh, that yesterday. you're home late from work, and you say, well, dinner wasn't ready yesterday, so right. I figure I'd come home late yeah, today. Yeah, that's right. Dinner yeah. was- I'm so thrown off. I don't even know what to say as my introduction, just because I watched till the very end, and I saw the clip for Decision Day, and I don't know why I did this, because now it has left me sort of all over the place. Um, the weddings seemed great. Everybody seemed to have a great time and seemed to really like the person they were matched on wedding day. Um, I was very sure that Orion and Lauren were going to make it. But from the clip that I've seen uh, for decision day, I am now worried. And the incident apparently that seems to have taken place during the experiment and so we'll see i think my only hope at the moment is cameron and claire even though it seems someone was involved in an accident it seems more like claire and i hope she wasn't seriously injured but anyway i digress hey guys thanks for stopping by it's valerie welcome to my channel if you're new here don't forget to subscribe click the like button turn on the notification bell for when i upload new videos and definitely leave a comment in this episode i'll be reviewing married at first sight season 17 episode 3 we pick up at Cameron's wedding. Cameron is so nervous. He's so shaky. And when he sees Claire, he's ecstatic. He's excited. I think he really likes her. So I have hope for them. Um, obviously, they, well, the families write, you know, letters sort of to explain who their person is. And in Cameron's, they didn't really give personal, personal information. All they gave was the fact that, you know, he's a tall guy. They spoke about his bike shop and that seemed to be it. Um, and I liked their service. It seemed emotional. Uh, Claire had saved a seat for her brother and they really both seemed very impressed with the person they were matched with. Sadly, Cameron's ring didn't fit. And it's like, Mavs, did you not measure him for a ring or did you give him another groom's ring? Make it make sense. Um, but Claire was able to pick up once she heard Cameron speak because when she got the Kiwi uh, stuffed animal, she was like, why is he giving me this? But when she heard his accent, that's when it sort of made sense that he's actually not from the USA. And so she, I think, got a deeper appreciation for the gift. Um, what, after the wedding, they went, they sat down, they seemed really ecstatic. And on his part, I have to give him credit. Cameron said, if he was in a co in a cafe and he was having coffee and she was sitting there, she's someone he would want to talk to. So that shows that that's his type, which is good. And the fact that, you know, you're, he said, you're more beautiful than my ex. And it's like, Cameron, your ex is going to see this. What do you think? How do you think they'll feel hearing you say that? Yes, you're trying to impress your wife, but, you know, be careful. Um. Claire, on her part, seems happy with Cameron. She seems ecstatic. Um, she was happy to be marrying him. And she sort of um, gave the impression that, you know, he was her type. Um, he told her that he's from New Zealand. He told her he's got a sibling. And I've always wondered why he doesn't say anything about his family. Apparently, he, he's... He's got dual citizenship, so he's both American and New and from under Kiwi. He's from New Zealand. Uh, his mom is from America, and so he said his parents couldn't come for the wedding. But I remember I said this last week when I was saying maybe his family is waiting until after eight weeks after decision day, and then they'll get to meet the bride. And it seems this is what they've decided. So. After decision day, the plan is for them to go to New Zealand and also have another ceremony there with, you know, his parents and the rest of his family, which is sweet. She seemed very receptive. So I have high hopes for them. I wish them, you know, I root for love. So I hope they really do work out. Although Cameron looked like a deer in headlights because Claire was, she, I think, was trying to sort of ease him in because she was saying, oh, you know, I'm a quadruplet. My sisters are going to interrogate you. And he seemed terrified. He really did. He seemed scared. And I hope this is, they don't put him off because he seems happy to be matched with her. He, he gets the impression that she really wants this. And so the idea that, you know, she's already warning him about her sisters is something that, is scaring him. You can actually see it on his face that he's terrified. And I, I don't know why she didn't pick up on it. I really don't. And I wish the sisters had sort of given him time to get to know his bride before they started grilling him. But hey, it is what it is. So we have everyone taking their wedding pictures and it's so cute. It's so cute. Oh my God. It's so cute. It, it, 
I don't even know what to say. Anyway, Emily and Brennan. My concern, as I've said with Brennan, is he keeps going about this. My parents have been married. They are my role model to marriage. You know, uh, they've been married for 30 something years and they're not getting divorced. And I want the same for myself and Emily. And it's like, you can't say that. You can't say that. You have to wait until decision day. Yes, it's good to have a plan and to think in ahead in regards to your relationship, but you need to make sure that the two of you work. Don't set conditions for your relationship before it's even started. I don't get why he's so obsessed with them not getting a divorce, but hey, that's just me. Um, you then have um, Orion and Lauren. Oh, they're cute as well. They seem very happy to be together. Um, Orion at times his age shows the fact that he's 27 in some of the cutesy things that he does, but hopefully he'll be fine. Hopefully he'll be fine. I hope they end up being successful like Shanice and Jeff T. I, I don't want them to go through the struggles that Shanice and Jeff T went through, but they were both two people that wa really wanted to get married and were really willing to put in the work. And I hope they're willing to do the same. They were very cutesy with their pictures. I loved it and so natural. Um, Becca and Austin, mm, I'm getting a bit of bridezilla from Becca. The way she, I know she's a photographer and at times if something is your profession, you struggle to let go when you're not the one who's in control. So I get that. But the fact that she kept directing people on what to do and where to stand and, oh, hopefully she, she ends up being like the lady from last season, the one who was a bit intense. And yes, she's the one who said yes, Nicole, she's the one who said yes on decision day. So I, hopefully that's it. Um, and also Cameron and Claire. Cameron and Claire look like, you know, the prom king and queen. They look like they're going to their prom. How cutesy cutesy they are. They seem very impressed with one another. They seem to really like one another. And if nothing else, I, I'm hoping for a positive result from this season. They seem to have gone for an older sort of demographic one. They seem to have gone for people that seem to be really interested in getting married. But as we've seen on maps, anything can happen. So... I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm going to whisper this, but Orion and Lauren are one of my favorites. <laughs> because last time I said so, someone bit my head off and said, oh, you've jinxed a couple because you said they're your favorites. I like their wedding. I like how natural they are. Orion asked for someone who was inquisitive, someone who wanted to learn, someone who was well informed and so to get lauren you know they're having this conversation about grass dancers and or, or lauren is saying you know i want to understand what is that you know because i know with native americans you're not a monolith you're not all the same you know there is some sort of nuances that come with different tribes or some differences that come with different tribes so for him to have someone say that oh my god is amazing um, I hope we hear him also asking her about herself, although he says he's always dated outside his race, which was cute. They were so natural. They were so flowy. I really like them. I'm worried about the age difference, but, and I did say ab ab about the fact that um, um, Lauren had said she was bisexual, but I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. They both seem happy. They seem ecstatic with the person they were matched with. So that's good. It's interesting watching the couple sort of have conversations because you have Cameron and Claire. Oh my God, they seem like they're at their prom, but they're in their wedding dresses. Uh, Claire is smitten. She is gone. She is gone. Cameron is trying to be the gentleman because even when they went for their dance, you know, he was asked, you know, I'm five foot, you know, would you have any requirements? And he said, I wanted someone who was five, four and above. <laughs> And so, um, you know, and explained, you know, it's it's a bit awkward in the sense that he's this tall guy. He looks like he's about six feet and he's having to sort of crouch over his bride, I think, because she's wearing little pumps because, you know, it's going to be a long day. Maybe as they become more comfortable and she wears higher heels, they'll be, you know, less awkward. But it does look like it's going to be painful on his back and her back because she's going to have to sort of stand on the tippy toes to reach him but they seem very comfortable they seem very happy Cameron just wants you know Claire to be comfortable and to understand that he's in it for the right reasons and you know she's safe and I think if I were looking at the couples as they are I would say Lauren and Aura Orion and 
Claire and Cameron have a higher chance of actually making it in the sense that they seem to really like one another. Becca and Austin seem to have a lot of things in common. My only concern is that she doesn't boss him and he, he eventually gets fed up. Uh, with Emily and Brandon, mm, if they stay married, I think it's just because Brandon wants to stay married, but uh, they might be the train wreck couple. They might be the train wreck couple because they are having a conversation and she's sort of telling him, oh, did you have a great time at your bachelor party? I had an amazing time. You know, I drank shots from the stripper and he's sort of wondering, oh my God, what will my parents think when they see this? Because I think that's where his mind automatically goes to because he knows. I always say this, when people go on maps, they need to be cautious of how they behave because maps is going to play your worst moment until kingdom come. They're going to milk it dry. And so for her to behave that way, I don't know why, given how they, <laughs> they showed Dominic last season sort of chasing after the strippers. So I wish she had behaved better. Uh, Becca and Austin, they seem happy, really. They seem to also have a lot in common. They were talking about, you know, going skating and I don't know, and their allergies. And so I don't know. As long as she doesn't boss him about, I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be fine. But if she starts to boss him about, he might check out. So everybody had someone say a speech and um. I guess it, they were awkward just because, you know, they don't know the person that their relative is getting married to. They don't know the family, so they don't want to offend anyone. And so it's sort of bordering on what do I do? What do I say that will please my family and also not offend the other family? And it was cute that <laughs> when uh, Lauren's friend mispronounced Orion's name, she corrected him immediately. And it was like, she ain't playing about her man. She ain't playing. I have high hopes for them. I really hope they, they both seem to be in it for the right reason. So if they're willing to put in the work, I can see them working. Uh, Cameron, obviously, you know, he's worried about the sisters because he's already heard about the sisters. And for the sister to say, I'm very protective of my sister, I'm this, that, that terrifies him because he doesn't know what to expect and he doesn't want people that are very intense and he comes across as someone who's non-confrontational so i hope they tread with care and they don't end up chasing away you know he could be this new zealand prince for all we know for claire so i don't know we'll see uh his family was happy i like the joke about oh i'll now talk about claire anyway i can only give you seconds because i really don't know her so that was cute Brennan had his dad give the speech and it was like, oh, this is awkward. This is awkward. But he did try. He did try. And so it was nice to see everybody had someone sort of stand up for them and sort of give a speech and speak on their behalf. We didn't see Orion's family. I don't know why. Maybe it wasn't as toxic or it was more emotional. So the producers couldn't get what they're after. Uh, and then you have Austin and Becca sit down with each other's friends and it's the most awkward thing ever. Marv's families will embarrass you. I don't know why they do this every season. They will embarrass you. They will say some things that are like, because like Brennan's friends are sort of asking, what was your first impression? And, and the way Becca started it off, was off-putting for them. There was, there was, because she was talking about, oh, I hope he's not here for fall. I didn't want someone who was here for followers. I didn't want, and they were like, what does she mean? Is she here for followers? And then she, she ended it very well by saying, you know, him becoming emotional is what made me realize that, no, he's in this for the right reasons. It's not just in it to be on TV. So I have high hopes for them. They are my couple, which I say that 50% they could work, 50% they couldn't work, as long as they're both willing to put in the work. Austin is speaking to her family and they're telling him that, oh, she's very direct. You need to know yourself. You need to know your self-worth. And she's very sex positive. And it's like, why would you say that? Why, 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 why not just reserve your comments if you have nothing nice to say instead of scaring this poor man before he's even got to know his wife? Because now he's thinking, is she a swinger? Is she what? Is she? I don't know. At times people should just keep quiet if they have nothing to say. I don't know why Mavs always asks family members to speak to the, to the spouse so quickly, so soon. Cameron's mother-in-law is ecstatic. She's smitten. Claire's mom, the way she was dancing with Cameron and she was so excited and giddy. And it's like, oh my God. Even the sisters, although they're sort of trying to be standoffish, they seem excited about him, but they're saying, oh, they're trying to make out like he's got a big head. He's telling, I have a feeling Cameron might come from money. 
I have a feeling he might come from money. I remember saying this about Steve, saying Steve has money. I'm going to be the first one to put it out there. There must be a reason why his family don't want to be seen on camera and they want to make sure that this marriage is actually real. The fact that he says he came to America with $5,000 and he started his business. I have a feeling he comes from money. I have a feeling because of the way he talks and the way he carries himself, he must come from some sort of wealthy family and they want to remain anonymous until this whole thing is finished. And if it then turns out that, yes, it is a genuine marriage and she's really interested, then they will step forward. Watch this face. Watch this face. But her sisters, the way they were interrogating him and he's saying, I've excelled at everything I've done academically and whatever. And the sisters are sort of mocking him. They're going to be surprised. They are really going to be surprised when they find out who he is. Ma watch this face. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say it that I told you so. But I have a feeling. I have an inkling. I, I don't know what it is, but something tells me that mm, he might be, you know, coming to America. Eddie Murphy, who was in disguise and worked in this market. What was it? McDowell's and stuff. That's the impression that I'm getting from Cameron. Well... <laughs> I don't even know what to say really because Lauren's family well her Lauren has a chat with Orion's sister and friend I think and they were sort of very accommodating they wanted to know about her and they gave her some positive advice on what to do because she says she needs you know positive she needs a uh, reassurance from people positive affirmations from people and so they were telling her that you know you need to tell orion when you need that or just to say okay at this point in time i would like you to give me you know validation on something or to, to give me positive affirmations or just to reassure me to make me because she's still struggling with her self-worth she wants people to sort of validate her and so that was good the dad though is coming with the smoke the dad is coming with smoke because he asks orion that um okay so what are your plans because he was happy that orion is an electrician and or orion seems uh to have been licensed to work in new york and so he asked him what are your plans and orion is telling him the truth that you know I want to buy a house on the East Coast and also here in the mountains and so I can alternate between the two. And the dad is like, well, you haven't included my daughter in that. And it's like, uh, he does hasn't had an opportunity to think. Give him time. Give him time to speak to your daughter and to reach an understanding with your daughter before you come in guns blazing. It's not like he's going to bundle her up and run away. I I was scared for him. I was scared for him for that. I really was. And then when the dad asked him the next question, you could see he was nervous because he didn't know what to say or how to answer the question. So from, because he was very nervous, the dad was like, you know, even if whatever questions I ask you, it's too late for, for, for me to say no because you're already in the family. And Orion was like, yeah, I still need your approval though. And the dad was like, okay, it will take time. I hope Orion proves Lauren's dad wrong. I actually hope he he comes across as the best version of a husband that his daughter could ever have. I like the fact that they incorporated his culture and they had this drum dance. It was sweet. Obviously, with the question and him sort of talking about, I've never dated in my family and the patriarchy and stuff, I think he was just nervous. He was just waffling whatever came to mind. So it's sad, but hey, it is what it is. And then you have Emily. Emily is having an amazing time. I think she forgets that her in-laws are there. She is a party girl and still wants to party. And it's like, maybe calm down a bit. Although her in-laws seem to be having an amazing time because they're dancing on the dance floor. So, hey, it is what it is. I think all the couples seemed to get along very well at the wedding. I had high hopes for Orion and Lauren until I've just seen the trailer of the... Um, decision day and it doesn't look like they're there and there's this allegation of someone having slept with someone so i'm nervous because they were saying you know we're very connected we you know we feel like we were meant to be here we really like one another and what's and so i'm a bit confused as to what happened what went wrong i like the fact that they they really had a, an amazing wedding even the the bouquet when it was thrown and so i really I really wish them the best. I really hope they work out. Uh, and Claire and Cameron had a conversation with Claire's grandma. And so 
they both seemed very happy and Cameron was able to charm her and so she seems smitten with him as well I what do I think of the of the couples <laughs> I am concerned. Normally, I'd like to sort of watch a few minutes and then review and watch a few minutes and review. And I don't know why I left it till the end because now I'm sort of thrown off by the decision day clip that I've seen. It seems they're going to bring back Michael. I think they finally found him someone. So I hope he finds someone. But the weddings were too long. I don't I don't say they were too long, but they over extended in the sense that they showed us people dancing and they showed us you know everything or the conversations of the families which were all very awkward so oh, i'm thrown off with orion and lauren what went wrong really why did i watch the end of it before i gave my review now i'm questioning myself anyway it was a great episode i really enjoyed it and so we'll see how it plays out i hate the sex questions i will hate family members asking are you having sex tonight are you having sex tonight and it's like we really don't need that but anyway i can't wait for the honeymoons it seems like there's going to be a lot of drama i initially thought these couples were matched very well and would be very successful now with the clip that i've seen i am worried that some of them might just you know buckle under the pressure of the experiment but anyway we'll see how it goes thanks guys for watching please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and click on the link in my video to watch my review from episode two bye guys